Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are taking a look at the Max Illman, the Tier 10 Premium or Reward Ship, German CV. She's pretty much, well, hull-wise, she's pretty much a Richtofen, but plane wise she's quite different. So this is a coal ship, uh, you can obtain her for 264,000 coal. Um, I had to pay the full price because I used my coupon to get the FDR. And now I've just spent mm, like three months worth, worth of coal, well, more than that, on the Immelman. So I just wasted a lot of resources on two CVs. A class which I'm not very good in, but I'm going to review them for you guys as always. I already did my FDR video, and here we are with the Immelman video. So, she is quite the looker. The Immelman and the Richtofen are based off of the hull of an H-class battleship, so they're actually pretty well armored for aircraft carriers in terms of armor. I'm going to look at that right now. Whoops. Alright, there we go. So, bow armor, you got that nose plate that the, um, I think this is actually what the FDG has in terms of nose armor. Yeah. And I think it might very well just be the FDG's hull now that I'm looking at it. Um, I don't know if they've said outright which one it is, but I'm pretty sure it's the FDG's. Alright, so the side armor is 175. And stern, you got the plates back there, 19 millimeter uh, stern armor, and the bow is also 19 millimeters too. So yeah, that that 160 millimeter plate's nice, but um, everything's just going to go through that. So sad panda there. And I think she does have the, as you guys saw, I was looking at that when actually my audio crashed, but I didn't take take I get to take a good look at it. Yep, <laughs> just have the good old um, turtleback citadel. So. That's pretty funny. Nice that they included that in the uh, armor scheme, though. So, one of the tougher CVs, to be sure, but I mean, it's still a CV. It's not going to be tanky for any duration. Okay, so, uh, planes. I'm very good with ships. Uh, planes, I don't know my planes that well. Um, you know, you, you show me a, sh a silhouette of a ship, I can probably tell you the class pretty close on to it. Uh, plane, it's got some engine and some wings, and... It's painted a certain color. That's my extent of the knowledge with the planes. But I knew, do know that these are the Falcon with 190s from War Thunder. I do know that much. And then we've got a TA 152s. I think these are these are the same planes that the uh, the Toffin has. But again, that that's that's it after that. All right, anyway, so the Falcon Wolves um, they have 100, 1,640 hit points. They cruise at 154 knots. Uh, their boost speed's 194 knots. So fast German planes. They have a 20 second engine boost, which loads in 40 seconds, you get 4 for the attack squadron, and these are the torpedo bombers. Um, the torpedoes have 1 per payload, just to get the super secret um, torpedoes that the um, Richtofen has. And they do 4,767 per torp, so four, so 16,000 damage if they all hit, uh, but they only go at 35 knots. I think the Immelman has like... Graf Zeppelin-ish torpedoes where they're slow, but when they all hit, they, they pack a punch. They have a range of 6 kilometers, they arm in 4 to 70 meters, and they are detectable. The planes are from 10 kilometers. You get 24 of those on deck in a 68 second restoration time base. And of course, no modules or captain skills have been applied. Now the skip bombers, and this plane, if you haven't noticed this plane, this carrier, if you haven't noticed, doesn't have rocket planes, which right now are pretty useless either way. Uh, 1,710 hit points, cruising speed of 174 knots, maximum speed of 214 knots, so much faster. Again, these are the planes straight from the Immelman, not the Immelman, the uh, Richtofen. 20 second engine boost time, 40 second restoration time, 4 per uh, attacking squadron, 12 per, per, I'm sorry, 4 per attacking flight, 12 per squadron. And she gets the HE skip bombs, and these bombs freaking hurt. 11,000 maximum bomb damage per bomb. You get four of those per uh, run. They can pin 68 millimeters of armor. They have a 63% chance of starting a fire. And they have two bounces. And the planes are detectable up to 10 kilometers away. 24 planes on deck. And a 64 second restoration time. Now since this is a German ship. She does have pretty decent secondaries. Sadly they're useless. She gets 24 of the 105s. They reload in 3.4 seconds pace, 5% jet starting fire, 26mm pin, 7km uh, range almost, and an HE shell velocity of 900 meters a second. So, like, these are 
decent DD repellent. Back before the Commander rework, I actually did build the uh, Rictolphin into secondaries for a couple of rounds for memes, and she was actually very, very good at just shredding DDs that got near her, but sadly that's not the case anymore. I mean, it might discourage a medium to low health DD from attacking you, but I mean, again, with a 7 kilometer range, you're not really going to be doing much. I mean, A, she has an A rating of 86. CVs, of course, have tend to have the strongest AA at their tier now. Maximum speed of 32 knots and a turning circle race of 1,200 meters and rotor shift time of 16.4 seconds. And she has a concealment range base of 13.6 kilometers. That's a really freaking stealthy base for a German ship in general. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and module and kit her out, and I will meet you guys right back here. All right, so the MON is kitted out. Let's take a look at the build that I put on her. So for the module build, we went with um, Air Groups Mod 1, A Aircraft Engines Mod 1, Aerial Torpedoes Mod 1, Skip Bombers Mod 1, Flight Control Mod 1, and then Flight Control Mod 2. Uh, there wasn't anything to like increase the reload speed of the Skip Bombers, so I just went with the Torpedoes there. Uh, I could have gone for the Torpedoes health here, but I figured the Skip Bombers are going to be the source of our big damage numbers, so I'd very much like for those aircraft to live. And of course, aircraft restoration time is always nice. Uh, no real need to build into the concealment system since the CV is normally at the back of the map anyway. Especially with the German CVs with how fast their planes are. You can play them close, um, but I mean with the speed, it's not really too necessary unless you're in a really, really dire situation. Which at that point, probably pretty late game and most of the other ships are dead anyway. And of course, Flight Control Mod 2 to make the planes go even faster. I could have added some more health to them, but with the German planes being so fast, I mean... Why not make them faster? Uh, Commander build, I uh, got Luchis on here, who is built for the Graf Zeppelin right now. But he's also Luchis, he's got a really, lot of really good perks with his um, air, aerial equipment expert, where, where once you hit a ship 30 times, you get a boost to the restoration time of your squadrons by another 10%, so that's very nice. Plus we can get our um, discount heal here with his resilient skill. And if we're feeling extra spicy, we can also go for the secondary battery loader talent. <laughs> Um, but yeah, probably the most ideal build for the Immelman, but I mean, it's it, it's a pretty nice build, although I, I might have would have grabbed that instead of the secondary uh, skill here. Uh, here, But, you know, if I wind up playing a lot of Immelman, I, I guess I'll swap them around. But anyway, so that's my build on her. Flags are equipped and all. And we're going to go ahead and hop into battle and see how well I can do with her. Be interesting considering how terrible of a CV player I am if we have managed to do good here in the Immelman. So I'll meet you guys there. Alright, so the Immelman. This has been a very interesting experience for me. So I played, I think, four to five games in the Immelman. Yeah, four to f uh, five games in the Immelman. And, well, it's different. It's a lot different from the other CVs that I've played, obviously. Because up until the Immelman, I'm pretty sure every CV in the game has had the rocket planes, torpedoes, and some form of bombers. The Immelman doesn't have any rocket planes. Which is kind of advantageous to it right now. Because rocket planes just received a huge nerf with the delayed firing from the machine gun firing. Then you get another couple seconds delay, then the rockets actually fire now. So she hasn't lost anything in regards to that because she never had it in the first place. So she only has two squadrons. You've got the good old um, torpedoes. I, th I do believe these are our tier 8 torpedoes with the skip bombers. And that's your two squadrons. You don't have another squadron of bombers. You don't have another squadron of torpedo bombers. You just got torpedoes and skip bombers. And boy, oh boy, these skip bombers are... <laughs> They're actually quite fun to use, in my opinion, at least. They are definitely trickier to use than any other CV armament that we've had so far. Rocket planes, I mean, up until now, those are... You can maybe argue those are trickier now with how much you have to lead those against some of the higher tier destroyers like the French or the, um, or the uh, Soviet destroyers. Um, but again, still, they're, they're fairly easy to use. You just gotta lead the target, click the button, and, you know, whoosh, off it goes. Uh, torpedo bombers, again, just gotta lead the target. Um, carpet slash dive, well the dive bombers, you know, you kind of had to aim for the right part of the ship, um, but you still had a pretty good chance of doing consistent damage either way, especially if they were HE bombers. The AP bombers, that's more up to R uh, RNG. And the carpet bombers, like the um, British CVs and like the 
FDR and just, you know, carpet the deck and bombs, you'll set three fires and do a bunch of HE pins and then be up on your way. Uh, the skip bombers, they're, they're trickier to use because you have to lead the target, you have to drop it at the right time, you have to aim for the right part of the ship, and you have to do this from a pretty far distance away because the bombs have to bounce twice in order to get armed. And then they smack into the side of the ship. And if you've got a ship with a very high freeboard, so like uh, British battleships, um, American cruisers, some of the Soviet higher tier cruisers that aren't the Petra Pavlovsk, you can do insane amounts of damage with these dive bombers. I was able to get a consistent 14k from ships like the Mosfa, the Des Moines, the Wooster, and I was probably missing a bit too. I felt like I led them correctly in 14k. That's a lot in one drop. And on top of setting a fire or two, because they have a 63% chance of starting a fire. So as long as you hit all four of these um, bombs on target, you're pretty much guaranteed at least one fire. Now every now and then, you know, I get screwed by RNG and I wouldn't get a fire. But, you know, you're doing 14k damage on top of setting fires with these skip bombers. And the thing is, it's feast or famine with these skip bombers. Either you're lining up perfectly, you perfectly smack into the ship's broadside, or you miss. And if you don't land at least three of these things on target, you're only doing maybe 4k, 6k, if you're lucky, 7k damage, which, I mean, it's still a decent bit of damage, but of course your chance of fire goes way down too, because half of your bombs missed, and of course there are sh some ships that if you hit the wrong spot, you won't even uh, pin them at all. Like if you're going after a battleship, you screw up, you don't lead it enough, you don't aim for the right part of the ship, like don't aim for the upper belt or the bow of the stern, you hit him on his belt, they're just going to shatter, and they're not going to do anything. Another thing too, the Immelman isn't exactly the best thing at fighting DDs. I'm sure somebody's very good at hitting DDs with these skip bombers, but it ain't me. And the torpedoes, they're so slow. I managed to hit like three of these on DDs, but it was, it was a Harugamo and a Holland both times. So, I mean, they're not the fastest DDs ever, and plus they were kind of bloodlusting because they stumbled upon my carrier. Um, but they're, they're very slow. Pretty much the Graf Zeppelin torpedoes, so you know what to expect there. So the ship in and of itself is not geared toward fighting DDs, which is probably a nice break for most DDs. Although most CVs, again, have lost a lot of their DD fighting capability with the rocket plane nerf. But overall, my experience with the ship, I mean, it, it's uh, its pretty much a tier 10 German CV. If you played the Richtofen, you know what to expect here. Good cycle rate on your planes. Planes are very fast. Don't have a lot of health, so if you run into, you know, a lone Busta or Minotaur or, you know, one of those ships with one or maybe another ship, you can reliably dodge the flat because your planes are very fast and they do respond very well and get in, get your drop off your payload and get out with minimal losses. Um, but once you get, you know, more than like three or four ships sitting on top of one another, you're just eating so much constant AA damage at that point in time that you're not really going to get through it. And with the Immelman, your skip bombers, they don't get the heal. On the Richtofen, your dive bombers get a heal. You don't hear. So that that's not that great. And uh, the torpedo planes do get a heal, but again, they're slower, they have less health, and they are I, I do believe they are tier 8 planes, so they're not as tanky. But the torpedoes, if you manage to get all four on target, they do hit pretty hard, so that's nice. But again... You still got to get all four on target. And overall, you know, I didn't do near as much average damage in the Immelman as I did with the FDR. With the FDR now, I can pretty easily do 120, 130k in an FDR game if the match does, you know, last longer than like seven minutes. In the Immelman, I had um, two games that last past the uh, 15 minute mark in both of those games. The first one, which is probably the one you're watching now, like 114,000 damage. Second one, I think I did 120 ish. So, two really good games there for me, at least in the CV. Uh, the other two games that they were just, phew, they were over by the five minute mark. They were, you know, those blow up matches that are also common now. I mean, like, really, I barely had time to do anything. And then the first game, I got up to 57,000 damage. The second game, I got up to, like, I think 47,000 damage. But again, like, the game was over by the six minute mark, and it ended. The first game ended at the, um, I think it was like 
15.30 was the time left on the clock. And then the second game, uh, there was like, again, like 14 minutes left. Like, it was complete walkovers. I don't know what's up with matchmaking. It's just like terrible nowadays and with the blowouts and it's aggravating. Especially when you're trying to get a feel for a new ship. But, long story short, when the match goes on and I had time to actually do something, I did okay in the MLM. For, for, for me, at least. I'm sure I get, a CV main gets a hold of this thing. Probably, could, God knows, sky's the limit. Because it, it's a fun ship to play. So, I did less average damage than the FDR, but I had more fun. The FDR, for me, it's not a fun ship to play. The planes are very slow. It takes forever to get anywhere. And yes, when you get to the target, you do a bunch of alpha damage, but that's it. That, that's the FDR right there. The element, you're doing a lot more. The planes are much more responsive. You got this neat new skip bomber uh, armament that's pretty fun to use. And at least for me, it's more like aiming um, aiming artillery than, you know, torpedoes or dive bombers or rockets. Because you do have to lead the target, aim for the right part of the ship, and then, you know, let your bombs go and hope that they hit and hope that RNG doesn't screw you over. So that's probably why I like this ship more, because it's got more of that going on with it. However, of course, that's interesting to note how good these skip bombers are. With the new Russian CVs coming out, this is going to be something that they have too, but they're going to be dropping at tier 10 twice as much of these skip bombs than the Immelman drops right now. Granted, their planes are ungodly slow and have even less health than, than this right here. Um, if you don't know, the Tier 10 Russian CV, its planes have less health than the Rangers stock planes. So yeah, they got a lot of bombs to start off with, but I doubt they're all going to make it to the target. Um, but yeah, too, so th that's pretty interesting that you can kind of get a little preview of what's coming out with the Russian CVs and the Immelman right here. So, the Immelman, what I suggest you guys buy the ship. Well, if you're a CV player, I'd say, yeah. It's a fun ship. The planes are very, again, very fast, very maneuverable. Good cycle time. Um, and we've been going up against this ship in clan battles, too. And it's quite fierce in there. It's very, very good, again, with just dealing with cruisers with high freeboard, which is a lot of tier 10 cruisers nowadays. Um, I've been playing Goliath a lot in CVs, and this is one of the things that I hate to see. I hate to see this thing more than I saw the FDR. Because with the FDR, I still had a pretty good chance of at least dodging the, um, the, the, the bombs and the torpedoes and stuff in the Goliath. But with the Immelman, the Goliath has such a high freeboard that a good Immelman player can almost guarantee at least one or two of these uh, bombs to hit. And that, that freaking sucks. Especially in a ship like uh, the Goliath with the British armor and such. But yeah, it's an interesting ship. And a ship that I actually enjoy playing. Um, again, I'm not that good in CVs. That's just, you know, my opinion on it. But, eh, if you're not a CV player like I'm not a CV player, I probably wouldn't have picked this ship up if it wasn't to review for the channel. So, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, probably more into artillery ships, I still say get the Palmer in first, and then something like the Salem with the Mosva after that, rather than going for the Immelman. But still, overall, one of the funner CVs that I've played. So, guys, that's my opinion on the Tier 10 special ship, the Immelman. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the view, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.